Ja Pow. B B King. Get free or die. Heavy is the head to wear the crown. Okay, family, tonight we're going to go back into the African foods that was introduced into the Americas. Okay, part two. So I need y'all to thumb up this video, like this video, subscribe to the uh, King Ja Power. Go over there to the throne of King Ja Power. Subscribe there also. Okay, now, so I want to get straight into the lesson because I don't know how long we got, but I want to make sure. I bring y'all this part two, okay? So let me explain this first clip I'm about to show. Now, see, when you a baby, you don't got to make nothing up. You fresh to the world. You see what I'm saying? You don't have no ideologies. You don't know nothing about no religions. You don't know nothing about uh, racism. You see what I'm saying? You don't know nothing about self-hate. You see what I'm saying? But see, you know, we have this, you know, adverse uh, relationship, you know, in the black community going on in America. Because you got, you know, a small group talking about they aborigines or whatnot. And then, you know, we you got the Africans, you know, in America or whatnot. So my thing has always been that we going to be who we are. A lion going to automatically go to chasing uh, uh, the zebras and the gazelles. See what I'm saying? The the uh, 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 gazelle going to go automatically to eating grass. You see what I'm saying? Which means we are, you know, pre-programmed by Jah or by the almighty creation. You see what I'm saying? Of Amara or whatnot that we shall exist. Okay, and that we don't have to be told about who we are. We don't need instructions to, you know, learn who we are on the planet. If we just be left alone, okay, then black people could be who they originally are. Now, since we're dealing with this identity crisis, I'm about to prove to y'all that black people is African people. Now, this baby right here, you know, wouldn't eat, you know, the little... You know, what the, what that little baby gerbil or whatever that little food they be eating. They ain't wanting to eat that. You see what I'm saying? And they trying to give them all this, you know, uh, what, Americanized food or whatnot. So the mama was like, she wanted to try something different to see if he would eat it. So what she done, she went and got some authentic food food, which we know is African food. Okay. And she wanted to see if the baby would, you know, eat it. And so... I'm going to play the video. Make sure y'all like this video. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel, family. I'm coming daily. Okay, I'm coming daily. Make sure you go over there to the throne, too, because I'm on my way. Ja Power, let me run this right quick. And he ends up falling in love with Fufu and Egg Yassi. Sue. This food? Okay, I got you. Oh, my God. You're so moving. What is... <laughs> when you help your son to be less picky by trying what? others' culture food, and he ends up falling in love with Fufu and Egg Yassi. Sue. This food? Okay, I got you. Oh my god, you're so moving. What is this? <laughs> but you see y'all that he even put the spoon down cause you know and I'm gonna tell y'all a story too here in a second but you see he put the spoon down start eating with his fingers now when we, we know you know <laughs> our African brothers and sisters ain't been using no forks and spoons okay by the only time they use a damn spoon, it got to be some soup or something. You see what I'm saying? But even me, now, you know, I eat with my hands a lot. Even before I was conscious or any of that. You see what I'm saying? That's African. You see what I'm saying? But this baby ain't been taught that we not Africans, that we uh, indigenous, that we 
uh, Jesus and all that. He ain't been taught all that goofy rhetoric that y'all believe in. See, you got to be taught all that goofy stuff and it turn the light off. See, that information is, is, is energy zapping. And so you when you kill the baby from thinking, you know, being open, he, he like an open portal because he new to the world. You know, he not being fed all this goofy, nasty food. You know, he more closer to the spiritual than in the physical because he just came in the physical. Okay? So, ordinarily, you know, black people are African. At birth, we don't have to, you know, you don't have to be taught to be African. You see what I'm saying? God, or you know, the almighty creator created us, pre-coded to be what we was going to be. Now, I heard Brother Sarai always used to say that. And this is, that's, that's the proof why I'm going to run it right quick. And so we can move on. Because this is a full lecture. When you help your son to be less picky by trying what? others' culture food, and he ends up falling in love with fufu and egg you see, soup. Okay, okay. Oh my God, you're so moving. What is See, he realized that that spoon was not conducive to that type of food. You know, you just grab it and, and smash. Now, right quick, I'm going to tell y'all this story. Now, I'm in Atlanta or whatnot with my African homies. But by that time, they done taught me into Africa and, and I'm rocking with them. You know what I'm saying? Because at first, you know, I had the American attitude. We we'll go down there around the Africans and shit. And Africans like to talk and have a conversation. They like to battle when they come to prices and all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? You fuck around be uh, negotiating prices with an African and be sweating bullets after the shit. You be mad at the nigga. He be like, all right, good. Let me see you next time. And I had to get used to that. You know, my uncle then was like, yo, that's just how it is. Don't worry about that. But after, you know, I, I started to learn the culture a little bit and they started to see it was like, wow. I started getting better prices and better prices. So one weekend I'm down there and we go out to eat. Now, before we leave to go out to eat, we having some business or whatnot in, in the shop. And there's a bunch of people in there. It's in the mall. And so, um, we in Lenny's, matter of fact. And so, um, I see all the Africans sitting down. I don't know if it was, you know, uh, what is it, uh, what they call a saw. Is it a saw that the Muslims eat at 12 o'clock? Okay. Correct me on that if I'm wrong. It's one, it's a saw, I think. So they sitting down, and you know, they're praying, they about to eat, and it's Friday and shit, but all the Africans get around in a circle. Now, mind you now, I'm still, you know, I'm starting to get conscious, but I'm still Americanized, though. You see what I'm saying? So I see all of them sitting down in a circle, but I only see one platter being brought out. And so I'm like, well, damn. They gonna all eat together, huh? And so I ain't get to see the rest. We ended up leaving. And I ain't get to see them start to eat the food. So we went and got some food or whatnot. And he brought out, you know, one big plate. We at, you know, my my the Africans restaurant. You know, we all sitting down and shit. And they bring us out one big platter. So I'm thinking they finna hand us some spoons and forks and shit. <laughs> Man, they came out there with some napkins and some limes and some water. Wash your hands and go get it. And I'm talking about. My, the Africans reached over there. Oh, I'm thinking it's my plate. He reached over on my plate. So I'm looking at him like, hold up, bro. You can't be doing that. I ain't say that, but that's what I was thinking. But I remember from earlier when all them Africans had been sitting down and they was eating, you know, I could tell they was all about to eat off the same plate, though I hadn't got to see this shit. And so that was a lesson learned for me on how, you know, we eat in communion. You see what I'm saying? Grab all the neighbors and the aunts. And that's what black people in America used to do. We just done lost our flavor. Now, this man right here, um, let me get his name right, uh, George Crom, who owned a, a rest restaurant uh, uh, in 1853. Uh, he had extra thin, created the extra thin French fries, okay, because we talking about food, okay, created the extra thin French fries, and he sliced them to the point where they would fry 
you know, and sell quick. You know what I'm saying? He can get them out quicker than selling them, them crinkly fries because they take a little bit more to fry. So that's where you get the, you know, McDonald's be selling them right now, them skinny fries. Okay? He also came up with <coughs> the struggle toe chips. You see what I'm saying? The chrome chips. And if I ain't mistaken, I still think they got a, you know, uh, some chips out there called chrome. You see what I'm saying? I want to get through this real quick. They stories in here. Now, this brother right here named Alfred L. Corella, and he uh is a very important uh African-American inventor. I think he the one. Oh, let me pull right here. He the one invented. Let's see. So he invented ice cream. You know what I'm saying? This brother right here invented ice cream and a few other, the ice cream scooper. You see what I'm saying? And different. And uh, he was from Philadelphia. Plus he owned a, a drug store. Okay. Then that's the sister y'all seen on the uh, the cover yesterday. Her name is Edna Lewis. Uh, she is from Midtown Manhattan. Uh, she's from the 19, she's from 1949. And she brought up her southern recipes up to New York, which, you know, is a mix between the African, you know, tradition foods, you know, which I showed yesterday. And I'm going to show again today if we had time. You see what I'm saying? Because I also got another video I want to play. But see, the people that I'm showing to you, they was uh very intricate in um, the cuisine. Now, this uh brother right here. <laughs> I mean, this sister right here, She, her name is Leah Chase, and she is the uh, known as the queen of Creole cuisine. You see what I'm saying? Which is African, okay? Because we talk about, you know, the African origins of the uh, American foods. And okay, this sister name is Zephyr Wright. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, she she popularized household house parties. You see what I'm saying? In Washington, D.C., you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, who will follow Johnson? Uh, Lyndon Johnson to the White House during a uh, tenure that charge uh, of the home of cooking in charge of the home cooking in the White House. So this sister right here was actually in there cooking in the White House. See what I'm saying? See, you know, when, the, when, when, when Big Mama was down there cooking in the slave cabinet, you see what I'm saying? You know, uh, the master was sent down there for her, even though they had just thrown out the chitlins, the turkey necks. The uh 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 pig feet and all of that, they threw that out there for the slaves and shit. You see what I'm saying? Corn, you see what I'm saying? The the uh what they call it? Uh 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 a uh, cornbread, you see what I'm saying? They all what you call slave food. Uh soul food is slave food. This brother Nathaniel Green. Now this brother right here, you know, let me make sure. Yeah, this brother right here is the one that uh came out with Jack Daniels. This is the slave that helped his master come up with the recipe for Jack Daniels. And I just showed y'all yesterday that the Africans bought the original beans over here to make Coca-Cola. Okay, 16 black African inventors who changed food forever. And that's, you know, a few of them off that list. Okay, that go the uh ice cream scooper, the uh Coca Cola. It's up in the exhibit in a museum in New York. So again, right here you got the uh Ethiopian coffee. See that shit when you go over there. I know y'all drink coffee. It say Arabian coffee. Well, really in in reality, the coffee that's in Arabia came from Ethiopia. Okay, and they got Ethiopian coffee over here, but all coffee is Ethiopian. Okay, so every time you drink some coffee, it's Africa. Period. Okay. Again, yesterday we did the rice pudding. Now, hold up. Let me get into this. Let me get into this because I want to play this part before we go on. Boom. Let me play this little and video. Y'all yo, like the video, family. Things to feed the people were also born. In the areas where slaves were allowed to grow their own food, there was the question of what they wanted to plant. And what they wanted to plant was okra, bananas, watermelon, yams, rice, and peanuts. The adaptation of African foods to the Americas took place in two different stages. The first was the result of the fact that the slaves came from many different tribes with many huh? different gastronomic traditions. 
And when they were brought together on the boats and in the plantations, they began to exchange those traditions. They didn't come from the same place. They didn't speak the same language. And so what happens is, as they are juxtaposed within this new world environment, there is a trade-off. And A may come with B, and B may discover C. And so you get the evolution and the creation of what becomes, I contend, one of the world's original fusion foods, which is Creole food. Aww. The next stage in the adaptation of African foods to the Americas involved the process of substituting readily available American ingredients for the foods of Africa that were no longer at hand. In the process, Africans played a major role in the creation of American cuisine, particularly in the Caribbean and the southern United States. Thousand years. So that lets you know right there, you know, and y'all need to, uh, it's a documentary up here, the African foods that was introduced into the Americas. You could just type that in on YouTube and the documentary will pop up. Okay, so you could go watch that video, but you know, this what I'm saying is diving deeper, even further than that. You see what I'm saying now? Something else I want to show real quick, and then I'm gonna be on my way off this one. So, seeds was very important to you know the transport of the African foods into the Americas. See. We don't know that banana is an African word for bananas, okay? Or bakuku, that's bananas, okay? And so bananas was introduced into South America before the transatlantic slave trade and during the transatlantic slave trade, okay? And that's why you got different types of of bananas because they come from different regions in Africa. So if you go to South America, bananas not is, is not indigenous to the Americas. They come neither is figs. Figs are also uh come from West Africa. Okay, so wherever you see a fig tree, you see what I'm saying? They originate in Africa. Period, which proves who came here then and before. Okay, because you know you never see the uh Mayan uh, uh, glyphs or whatnot, you never see them eating no damn bananas, okay? Because them shits wasn't here yet, okay? Them shits wasn't here yet, not in abundance at that time, okay? And so, you know, this, you know, you know, not only did they rob mineral resources, human resources, they also took seeds back to Europe, back to the Americas. That's that's facts, okay? And you can, you know, we'll dive deep into that on how did it affect. The other side, really, of the ocean as far as, you know, in Europe. Because right now we're doing the Americas. But you see the seeds, you know, that they transported across uh, the way, okay, that was originally in Africa. So that's why when I showed the other video, uh, the origin of African versus the African Americans. That's why they was picking on the African Americans about bananas, about uh 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 watermelon. Okay, they that's that was something new to the European. You see what I'm saying? But if you go in the store, even today, white people be asking, "Can I get some chitterlings?" Okay, I don't heard them say it. Okay, and that's just facts. And so. There you go right there, family. Part two of the African origins of the food that went into the Americas. Jump ja, pop. Be, be, king. Get free or die. Heavy is the head to wear the crown. I'm over there on the throne, family.